you really get to know each other in good times, but also in bad times. And um, we're all with the same goal in the boat. So they know when I want them to push harder that it's necessary. So um, it's not pushing them harder, it's pushing, uh, they want to push harder themselves. I'm just reminding them during the race. It's tough because some person is saying sitting on her ass doing nothing, <laughs> saying to push harder now. It, it, it's, it's, it's what you chose for. I mean, it's the, 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 the fun part is the racing. You do all the trainings you do just for the moment you're able to race and to be the best, hopefully the best in the world. I think she will always have like an eye on everyone. And that's, that's not even then, but during the days, uh, every time we're together, I th she's, she's always noticing everything. So yeah, she has that role. So I, for sure, that also during the party, even though when she's drunk, I think she still has to control. Is everyone safe and stuff? Yeah. More like the kindergarten teacher. <laughs> I think it's about knowing the uh, strengths and the weaknesses of your own crew and knowing how to respond to other crews um, or some technical aspect. I think there are different styles of coxing. So there are people that are more aggressive or uh, shouting or cursing, I don't know. I'm a bit more relaxed and a bit more technical in trainings. And in races, I uh, try to, be, to, to inspire my crew to push a bit harder than you would do in the training. We will get a better speed when we listen to her. And uh, that's the way we work. Uh, she tells us do this and if we do that we will uh, get the speed up. Those are crucial moments and you can make or break a race. So during the race I am basically just calling the race plan. So I'm letting everyone know how fast they're going, how fast the other boats are going and where they are in the pack. So kind of the way that I would describe it is that it's like a quarterback in American football uh, or maybe like a jockey in horse racing. So I'm not, actually, <laughs> I'm not actually powering the boat, but I am like calling the plays and telling them when to go harder or maybe make a technical change. I wouldn't, I mean, you can't really give what she does kind of a percentage based on the nine of us in the boat. We couldn't do what we do without her. Um, I like to joke that we could, but <laughs> a toe, um, right? she, I could just I could just do a toe and it would be <laughs> totally fine. Um, but she really, it's you know, two K race is pretty painful, and um, she steers the boat and tells us, like she said, tells us where we are. But it's also helpful to have um, an external voice other than one that's inside your head that's telling you that you this hurts. This I don't know if I can do this anymore. And then you hear her, and you're just like you're pulled out of the pain cave, and you can kind of embrace it for a little while longer and she makes it so you don't get caught up in your thoughts. It's definitely a matter of trust because if you are asking the group to do something and one or two people don't really know if you're right or don't really buy in then it doesn't really work as effectively as if everyone is buying in. Uh, I think for me it just takes a really long time to earn trust. I think more than anything I'm just there to get everyone on the same page. So as long as everyone knows this is the time that we push right now, then they feed off of each other yeah. more than I feed them. Does that make sense? So like when you're in the boat and you can feel the girls in front of you and the girls behind you going, it sucks you in and you go too. And I'm just there to say, okay, all eight, this is where we go now. So that everyone's putting it in at the exact same time. And then they, they feed off of each other for that extra five or 10%.